What's up guys, this is Ed Gregory from photosincolor.com and we are back with another pick live show. This week I'm going to be reviewing your photographs and the theme was center frame, I believe. So here we go. So what is center frame and what is pick live? Well, basically this is your opportunity to hop onto the link below. I think it's below anyway, and you can upload a photograph. I will be taking a look at your photographs live during this show and I will be telling you my thoughts on it, how you shot it, how you could improve it. But remember, it's all about the theme of the week. This week is center frame, meaning everything needs to be smack bang in the middle. We're not going to be looking at the rule of thirds or anything like that. It's actually the opposite, straight in the middle. Also, remember, you can ask me any questions during this show. We have the wonderful Rosie White who is sitting right over here, and she is going to be looking at your questions. Can we bring up Rosie? Let's bring up Rosie. Hello, Rosie. Hi. Um, <laughs> she's going to be reading through all of your comments, and she's going to be asking me questions live and I'm going to be answering them as best as I possibly can. Now, I don't get to see any of your comments because once this thing, at the end of the live show and we upload it, all of the comments are deleted, I don't get to see them. So please write to them now and ask any questions because I won't be able to respond after the show. Um, yeah, so that's it. Right, we're going to jump in in a minute. We're going to talk about a few other things this week, um, but we have loads and loads and loads of uploads. So we're going to get in and start editing. Kev, let's do that thing on YouTube where we add the thing. Let's do it. I don't know. We're, we're trying something new. We don't know what this... There's a button on YouTube and it says that we can post something. We don't know what it does, so we're just going to post it. See what happens. We did it. I don't know. So let's jump in and we're going to start looking at your photographs today. The theme was center frame. This one was sent in by Trapadams. He, he shows up every single week and um, uploads photos. Now, my question is here. I want to make sure that I'm doing the uploads at the right time because sometimes sort order, added order. There we go. So this is added order. Oh, and we should probably do, what, what should I do? Ascending or descending? What was the first photo that was added? Not that one. Okay, so we we'll want the other one. Sorry. Um, we need view, sort order, ascending. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I said ascending. Sorry, I said that sounded really funny to my ears. <laughs> um, okay, so this was set in by Trapadams. This is definitely center of the frame. I really like this photograph. I'm going to hop over to the develop module like so, so we can really get in and have a look. Um, I love this. It is a lonely, uh, what is this? It's a barn. It's a perfect bright red barn in the middle of a wintry scene. Um, I think you've done an amazing job with this. It's smack bang in the center. It's exactly what it should be for a photograph like this. Um, Everything is white and desaturated. The only thing we have is the red. But what I'm really happy that you didn't do, and that is get rid of all color. What you could have done, and I'm gonna show people this, and say don't ever do this, is pull down the saturation on everything like so, and then just bring back the saturation in one area. That's one of those photographs that is very 80s in style, where, you know, it's just, you got the red bus in London and everything else in black and white. And I did loads of those years ago, but I, I think they're, they're very dated and I don't really like them anymore. So I, did, I think you did a really good job at keeping a little bit of color down here. Absolutely awesome work. I'm gonna give you a pick. Now let's move on. Yes, this is center frame. It's actually slightly off center. You kind of need to like this. That was, a, was, that, was that a loud whistle to everybody? tuning in. I bet it was. Sorry. Um, this here, now it's smack bang in the center. I like it. There's a few challenges with this though. We're actually shooting from below the model. My guess is you wanted to get that beautiful hair light just here, um, which is not off there. It's off the hat. So the sun is behind it and you've achieved that really well. The problem is you're shooting underneath the model and you're looking up a little bit. Now this could be a hero shot, which would be great, but if you're going to do a hero shot, pull back even further and get the entire 
body on there. That really is how we capture a hero shot. In fact, Rosie, where, where can we find your hero shot that I did of you? Is that on your spot? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I know. If you, if you go and look at Rosie White, White on Instagram, what's your Instagram? Very Rosie. Very Rosie. There's a photograph of her on a blue background. Um, it was shot in the Bahamas, and that's what, what I would say is a really great it's hero on, shot. It's on Photos and Colours website for your presets. Oh, Maybe if you go to Photos and... If, yeah, if you go to photosincolor.com and go to the, the Photoshop training course that you can buy from me, it's a full Photoshop training course where I teach you the entire foundation of Photoshop. Um, she's one of the images on there and you can see that's a real hero shot. Anyway, let's keep on moving there. So I like what you've done. I just think that you could have got more of it there. Outside of that, I think the editing is nice. You brought back the blues in the sky. You've not overexposed the white down here. And what you've done, which is really difficult, is you've, ex you've got the white balance correct, which is hard on those wintry, snowy days. So really great work. That was sent in by, I'm trying to get better at this, um, Alan Bejic. Bejic? Begic. I don't know. Everyone laughs at me trying to do people's names. I fail. Okay, um, Amira Majid sent in this photograph. Uh, I'm not gonna really review this because what's happened is they've sent in a very low quality photograph. Um, you can see it's just pix pixelated, so I can't really review it technically or anything there. Um, this is from the same person, still a little bit low quality. Guys, let me say this. I can tell here where it says IMG blah blah blah, it probably came from Facebook. Please don't just go onto Facebook and drag your, drag your images because two things happen. One, they are crushed, really low quality, and I can't actually assess them properly. And number two, it strips them of all the metadata, so I don't know what lens it was taken on, I don't know what conditions it was taken under, your f-stop, your shutter speed, all that really interesting things that allows us to analyze a photo correctly. So please try and send me your edited photo, not just a drag and drop from Facebook. Okay, let's continue though. I will take a look at this one though. Um, we do have sharpness in the eyes, which is great, although it's not center in the frame. So I can't edit that one either. So let's keep on going here. This again, uh, same person. So this person uploaded loads and they're all just taken from Facebook. Um, okay, let's have a look at, th look at that photo. Wow. That is a slow shutter speed. Um, that we've got the spinning there. My guess is it's, what's it called, a carousel? What's the ones where the, yeah, you, carousel. carousel, isn't it? What's the ones when you're on the swings underneath? Carousel. A carousel. Yeah. So it's a carousel. I'm guessing it's a carousel. Um, Rosie says it's a carousel. Oh, that's um, uh, I think it's fantastic. Um, I really like the photo. I like the color grade on it. It's quite contrasty for me. Um, but I don't mind it. I just wish that you had the edge of the frame here and framing it smack bang in the middle is perfect. But let me just tell you a couple of the issues that you can work on here. One, we got the slow shutter speed that got these beautiful lines. The problem is if we look at the background, and we look at the railings and the people, you've shot it handheld. What you really want for this is the spin to be out of focus and everything else to be sharp and in focus. One more, then we're gonna come back to a little something. This here is, it is smack bang in the center. So it is on this week's challenge theme and I like that, so thank you, Chris Briggs. Few challenges with this. We don't have any breathing room around the edge here. So what you can either do is you'd want to give it a little bit of breathing room or you crop it in giving the illusion that there's even more wine glasses that it keeps on going forever. So I would have done that. The other issue is you've cut off the bottom of the glass. The main focal point of this image, and you've got rid of it. It's like you've gone all the way to somebody's ankles. If you're gonna crop something, you can't crop it just off the bottom. You need to crop it somewhere. I mean, that doesn't work either. Um, you, you basically you needed to get the entire glass in here. And I think the whole thing is a little bit dark, so you just need to lift this up. And the white balance, this is a white wall. No, it's not a white wall, it's a yellow wall. This is white back here. Okay, so the white balance wasn't too bad actually, but you've cut off the bottom of the glass and you just can't do that. 
Okay, let's come back here because remember, um, if you haven't tuned in before, welcome to Pick Live. Very excited to have you here. We have a growing community um, on this live show, so it's super exciting to have you here. Um, one thing that we do each week is you guys get to choose what next week's challenge is. And I always request that you really challenge and push yourself to um, uh, upload photographs that are with the week's theme. So we have Instagram. Did we go live? Yeah. So if you head over to Photos in Color on Instagram, you go to the story, and what you can do is vote on next week's theme. It looks just like, I can't do it. Oh, it looks like this. Boom, woo, you can see it. There you go, that's what you're looking on. You can vote. It's currently on 64% NT, 36% reflection. Okay, so what are those? Empty basically is like negative space or something which is empty, like an empty glass. And then reflections is any type of reflections that you must use and feature in your image. So that might be a reflection in water, reflection through glass. The photograph that we use there is a reflection on a mirror. That was a very interesting photo. Um, in fact, if we come back to my screen, I've got a few examples of both themes that I did for you this week, because last week I got that as a request. So here we go. This, it, these are some different uh, themes. So this is obviously, this would be empty. This is also empty. Look at all of the wonderful negative space that we've got here. Empty again. So all of these things would fit inside that theme. Empty again, another empty, an empty coffee cup. And if we keep on going here, this would also be under empty. This here, would be empty because it's an empty swimming pool. You see, we can get creative and more interesting with this. And then if we move on to reflections, we've got reflections in puddles, we have reflections in water, we have reflections through a window. I absolutely love this photo, by the way. This is a reflection of a model inside a building that you photograph them in focus through the building but manage to keep the contrast of the light in the window visible, looks fantastic. Another one shot through a window or a pane of glass, really beautiful. Um, an interesting photograph using a swimming pool as a reflection. Reflection of a car in a window that's created this really cool dynamic effect. And a reflection through a crystal ball looking into the future. So you can see there, lots of different options for what reflections and empty would actually look like. Head over, photos in color on Instagram and you can vote. Questions? Mm -hmm. We have questions from Rosie. Question time. Do, 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 do. Um, this is from, um, oh, I don't know his, what his name is, but on, on here it's it. Beans on Toast. Beans on Toast. But he, he's the one that does the little, um, oh. the, the little, what are they called? The, the figures. Little, figures, the, yeah. The figures, the little models, and you do the beautiful things you did. Last week was London, the Mini, and Big Ben, I believe. <laughs> Um, beans on toast, welcome. Beans on toast. I love beans on toast, actually. Um, sorry. Um, is a four frame camera that much better in terms of quality compared to an APS-C? Okay, we're talking about, about APS-C or cropped frame versus full frame. Um, is there that much of a difference? Yes, there is a, in my opinion, a large difference, but not necessarily in quality, just in the look and feel. The reason is, it's basically we talk about sensor size. So you've got a full frame sensor, which is um, diagonally 35 millimeters, which was taken from 35 mil film. Um, and then APS-C, and then uh, Nikon is uh, uh, DX it's called. I don't know what it's called in Canon, but basically every single one has a different kind of name for it. It could be micro four thirds or whatever, which is a different sensor size but basically they interact with life, light a little bit differently. Um, on a full frame sensor, you can actually get a far shallower depth of field with a higher F, a similar f-stop. Um, you can actually get a shallower depth of field on a full frame sensor. Also, you have to think about pixels. Pixels are tiny little dots, right, that, that collect light. A, if you've got 24 million pixels, um, on a sensor that's only this big, they're all crammed together over the top of each other. If you've got 24 million pixels across a sensor that's just this big, they have more space to breathe, they can let on a lot more light, it's gonna be a lot better. However, 
They use a slightly different technology. And when you actually look at lenses, um, you'll see on a crop sensor um, lens that it, it's always an equivalent. So it's 50 millimeters. It might be a 50 millimeter equivalent, meaning it's not actually a 50 millimeter lens. It's a um, 80 millimeter lens, but then it's actually the equivalent on a crop sensor is going to be 50 millimeter. Anyway, it gets really mathematic. Tony Northrup, go and look at him on YouTube about that. He'll talk, talk for days about crop sensor and full frame. He knows all of that stuff and he's brilliant at it. But I would say I started shooting crop sensor, upgraded to full frame, saw a huge difference. However, I saw this much difference in quality and I saw this much difference in the expensive of equipment and lenses and everything. So if you don't have a massive budget to upgrade all your equipment, you really don't need it. That it for questions? Uh, no, we've got oh, we've got more questions. Let's do one more, then we'll get back into editing. This is from Helen Jenkins Knight. Hello, Helen. <laughs> Welcome. Um, when you edit, at what point do you switch to Photoshop from Lightroom? Do you do most of your own editing with Lightroom or Photoshop, and which do you prefer? Okay, okay, great. So Photoshop or Lightroom, which one do I use, which one do I prefer, and where do I do what? So I'll stick with Lightroom 80% of the time. I love Lightroom because as a photographer, this is when I'm editing photos, by the way, because there's all sorts of graphic design things that we do that we might use Photoshop. But what Lightroom does is it only edits what is already in the image file, meaning it's, it's just like when you're in the dark room and you could edit differently and get the exposure changes and the color differences with the chemicals, you can do the same thing in Lightroom. Um, so what you're doing is you are editing what is in the image only, unless you start adding brush strokes and you start deleting things, but mainly you're doing that. Photoshop is this whole world of anything at all that you can imagine creatively, you can put together, you can composite, you can add layers, you can do all sorts of craziness. Um, usually my technique is I start off in Lightroom, I do all my culling of photographs, I do all my selects in Lightroom. I'll then go through and start editing inside Lightroom. And I'll be editing a photograph and I might, might say, you know what, this needs a more detailed skin retouch. If I'm doing a beauty shop, shot or a fashion shoot, then I'm gonna hop over and I'm gonna do a skin retouch. So what I would do is whatever settings I've already made, and I might be looking at the final kind of edit that I'm gonna do in Lightroom, I would then remove all of those. So I'd create a virtual copy, meaning that I've created a second copy of that. and what I would do is go back to the original, then I would remove all of the edits and I would just get the exposure bang on. I would export to Photoshop, go into Photoshop, do my skin retouch, get everything done there, Command S, so I've saved it in Photoshop, quit from Photoshop, back to Lightroom, and now that Photoshop file exists inside Lightroom. Now, if I liked all the edits that I'd already practiced with in Lightroom, all I have to do is sync those two files there, and then all of those edits appear on Lightroom. Uh, on the Photoshop file, but in Lightroom. I then finish all my editing, my tweaks and my color grade and everything inside Lightroom, and I export from Lightroom. Everything starts and ends in Lightroom. I only go to Photoshop if I need to. Two videos to go and watch here. Maybe we can bring these up. I have a video which is, mm, I think it's called Lightroom Workflow. Go and search this video, and I talk you through my entire process from the beginning to the end of how I uh, manage my files and how and when I go to Photoshop and come back. That's a good one to watch. Also, regarding Lightroom and Photoshop, I have a video which is called, What is Lightroom? Watch that video. I talk about what is Lightroom. <laughs> um, okay, let's jump back in. We're gonna watch one of those videos in a minute. We're gonna see if we can pull it up. But right now, we're gonna come back in and keep looking at your photos. Where did we get to? Uh, I don't know how this one appeared here. We missed this one before. I think I missed this one, I'm so sorry. Um, this one was sent in by um, Animesh Mandal. This is smack bang in the center, and honestly, you've nailed it. This is um, a perfect example of when to use the middle of the frame. If it was off to the side, it would be awkward. The, entire focus of this needs to be on this hand. It's got yellow paint on it. I don't know if that's from one of those paint runs or if it's 
a religious ceremony or something, but it's absolutely fantastic. And the hand is coming out. It's like that scene in Terminator 2, you know, when he gets lowered into the thing at the end and he slowly melts into the thing. That's what it looks like to me. Um, I love this photograph, absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna give you a pick. The only thing that I would change though is, let me bring in this here, is I think it's a little too dark. I wanna lift it up a hair. Okay, let's keep going. We already did that one. Okay, look at this from Giuseppe Salvini. Um, Beautiful bokeh, look at this round bokeh back here. It is so blurry and out of focus. That's gotta be a F1.4 is what I'm gonna go for, I don't even know. So you haven't given me the metadata, so I can't actually see what that is. I'm gonna go for an F1.4. Um, beautiful, I just don't know that it's of anything. I get it, there's the holly leaves that it's gone into autumn, autumn? Spring, when the holly leaves change their color, is that autumn as well? I thought they were winter flowers. No, but they go orange and red, don't they? Yeah, fall. in autumn, fall. fall. We're in America, fall. fall. Um, <laughs> uh, great, so I, I like the photo. I just think there's too much bokeh. So it means that we've not actually got that much focus on the middle. As a photo, I don't mind it. I just think it's a little crazy. You know what you could do with this? You can actually mute the greens. I'm gonna try that quickly. So I'm gonna go into greens and I'm gonna pull back. So I actually think that did quite a lot. What we did there is we took the greens and we got rid of them, which brings in more focus to that one color that we have left. Um, and I'm gonna boost the reds as well. So that there, now it looks like autumn. Okay, I'm really happy with that edit. That's what I would do with it. It looks really great. Let's keep going, we've got to get through a lot today. Giuseppe, that's another one from Giuseppe, you can only upload one. Oh, you're not quite at the center. You've kind of cheated me here. I'm gonna put this bang in the center and see what we're left with. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you get away with it. So this here would be smack bang in the center, just here. Um, I like it, I do like it. It's five past one, um, which is great. <laughs> um, I, it's like a pocket watch which is hung from the ceiling. Maybe it's, maybe it's, we're inside a station, maybe? Um, I like it, it is centre focus. It's a little bit boring though. I don't, I don't love it, I'm not excited by it. But if we're gonna talk about five past one, what happens very soon, if we stay on my screen here, I've gotta talk about this because I think it's hilarious, is in, what does it say, 109 minutes, SpaceX, so this here is SpaceX right now. They are launching their um, Falcon Heavy rocket. The reason I'm gonna talk about this, because I just think it's hilarious, is that Elon Musk, who is you know, the owner of SpaceX and Tesla Motors, he created PayPal, he created all these things. He, he's gotta test this rocket before they can send anything up, but they gotta test something heavy enough and he didn't know what to do. So he decided he was going to send up his Tesla car and it's got a person that sits in it like this, like an inflatable doll. And as it flies up, they're gonna be having um, David Bowie's Space Oddity playing forever. And apparently it's going to be orbiting Earth for the next like billion years or something. If you can go and watch, I'm only saying this because if you wanna go watch it, they're actually doing it live on, this is, this is, this is what it's gonna look like. I don't know if you can see this. I'm gonna fast forward it. So this is, what, this is what you're gonna see today. That's the car at the very top. I don't know if you can see this. Look at the car, the car is inside it and then it's going to take off and then they're gonna open it up in space. This is it in space, look. That's when it gets up there. And the cool thing is they're gonna fly this rocket back down to earth and land it um, at a cost of $90 million a flight. So we should do like two a week. Pretty cheap. Anyway, I just want to share that because I think that sometimes we have to do these very serious things, but we have to do things a little light-hearted. And I want to high-five Elon Musk for um, sending up a car and making a little bit of a joke out of it. I think it's pretty funny. He, he also said he's half expecting the rocket to blow up. Oh, and he's also half expecting the rocket to blow up. Well, what was it? The first seven of their rockets that they sent up did explode. So it, it might blow up. It might not. Um, when it blows up? No, like... 
It just it just goes around space. But That's when, it. When it's finished going around space, what happens to it? Well, it, it won't finish. It's in space. Forever. Forever. So it will never fall out of space. <laughs> there is no gravity. There's no falling. It just it just will do that literally forever until it hits a a, a planet. Blows my mind, space. Space blows Rosie's mind. <laughs> That's what we've learned today. Anyway, so I don't know why I just showed you that. I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, if you got any comments about Elon Musk's ridiculousness, please tell me. Um, okay, let's look at this from Denison Photography, Paul Denison. Um, is that a real moon? Wait, what? Paul Denison, are you here? Are you here? Um, it could have been the blue blood moon the other day. I think that's the real moon. The blue blood moon. The 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 half prince blue blood moon. <laughs> My dad's um, taking the mic out of me right now. Oh, is he? Rosie's dad is currently in the comments, so you should you should you should check that out. Uh, Ken, did you not teach that there's no gravity? <laughs> there's no gravity in space. <laughs> When's it gonna fall out of space? Um, I. Oh, Paul Denison. I. This gets a pick. This here must be. It's centre focus. You don't want to change anything about it. It's perfect. You've even got got. You've managed to get this lady and and I guess wife and daughter is what I'm guessing. Um, I hope that there was no cars coming. Oh, that's very dangerous. Um, either way, what an amazing photograph. Just just for the act of seeing that, amazing. Um, Rich Antonuccio. Um, this is center focus. Smack bang here is where my eyes are going. For me, it's a little bit green and yellow. The, the, the coloring is off here. It's obviously autumn because we've got all the leaves on the ground. So what I would actually do with this is I'd lift up the shadows and then I'm gonna come down here and all I'm going to do is I'm gonna move the yellows towards the oranges. Look at that. Now it looks like, I'm gonna bring you back to the saturation. Now it looks like autumn. Before and after, the autumnal feel is way, way more um, visible now. I'm also going to show you here in my presets. Um, if you go to lens and calibration, I believe I have um, something called. I did have something called autumn boost. Oh yeah, autumn. So if you select this, it's going to give you this. Ve but I've, I've moved all these now as well. So it, what it's going to do is it's going to give you this instant autumn feel without actually really doing anything apart from clicking that one button, um, which is pretty cool. So I like it. I just think that you got the color grade slightly wrong on that. And um, I just don't know that it's sharp enough either. It's a little, it's a little uh, um, weak. And I, have you added sunbeams or are they real? Oh, if you want to know how to add sunbeams, you can search my YouTube channel for light rays. We're going to bring that up as well. We're going to search for that. But in the meantime, can we actually play that other one? You found that one, didn't you? We're gonna bring up this one, which is all about the Lightroom <coughs> workflow. So we're gonna to listen to that just for 30 seconds because I think that you, you guys are gonna like it and get a lot from it. Let's bring that up. Delete him from this portrait collection just here. So he's no longer inside this collection, as you can see, but he is still inside this folder here because you will, I'm not removing him from a folder, just a collection. To add a collection, you just hit the... Okay, so that was actually Lightroom for, for beginners. It wasn't Lightroom workflow. But search my channel, you will find Lightroom workflow. But now we're going to find one which is called Light Beams. I think I called it Light Beams. Okay, here we go. Let's keep on editing down here, though. Um, sorry, I've got a really tickly nose today. Has anybody noticed? I need to, like, I don't know what. Okay, let's come back to my screen. Sorry, Ray is doing multiple things. He's multitasking. This from Tony Hunter. This is center focus, smack bang in the middle. Um, a really beautiful environmental portrait. Look at that, the sharpness is bang on with the eyes. I love the lighting. I love everything about this photograph. Tony Hunter, wonderful, wonderful job. I think though, I said I like everything, then, then I'm gonna make a comment. Um, I, what I would want to do is if you click up here, this is a circular mask. And if I click on this, and I'm going to reset it by hit double-clicking effect. What I'm actually going to do 
is inside my brushes, I, I have this, you can get this from photos in color.com as part of pick presets, is the brushes. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to um, radial filter, center focus plus. And by doing that, what it's done is it's added a bit of a blur to the outside and it's instantly changed that contrast a little tiny bit. If I hit zero, you can see what it's affecting, what it's not. And then if I come out of this, now if I look at the before and the after, you can see it's just brought in the focus that little bit. Let's keep going. Oh, Alpha, oh, Alpha, Alex Alpha Omega, this, this guy, I like it, because what was my name, I always say? Um, Edward Delta Echo, that's my, that's my name. <laughs> Such a cool name. Um, okay, this is smack bang, center focus, I like it. I think the image, I think when you shot it may have been a little bit overexposed, we've blown out the highlights, but we're in a very harsh sun. Um, so therefore it doesn't matter. The only way to change this image a little bit, which would have helped with the focus, would have been getting low to the ground and focusing across as opposed to down. And then um, we'd have got a lot more blur on the background with this photo. Uh, all shot at a lower f-stop. Um, again, oh, wrong one. How do I bring up the information? F7, yeah, I'd have gone all the way down to f2.8 if you could have done on this lens to really got that blur in the background. Oh, Alex Will. So my guess is this is in Africa. This is the Maasai tribe. Did I get that right? Um, the, these are the tribe people that jump really high. Um, I like it. I think that you needed a faster shutter speed. We only shot at 1 one twenty fifth of a second. You need to shoot faster because he's all um, blurry, which is a shame. Um, I like it as an image and the, the focus is in the center, but it doesn't do much for me. It doesn't, it's not very exciting. We've blown out the sky and things like that. Uh, I've already done that one. Brian Spur. Um, okay, so we're at the front of a ship. Is this a cruise ship? I, I can't, I think it is a cruise ship. I don't know what brand. Disney, it looks like. Is it in Disney? Let's see. It, it says Queen Mary, actually. It's Queen Mary 1. Disney's black on the back. It is, yeah, but this is a Queen Mary. Oh, it's um, I like it. As a photo, the focus is in the center, but you were off center. You need it to be more to your left. Walk sideways, because I, I feel like I'm going to fall off my chair looking at it, which is unfortunate. Um, and we've blown out the sky. So although it is center focus, it's a little bit boring. I can't really get any drama from it. Um, although I love cruising. Do you know what? I met Rosie on a cruise ship. That's actually where we very first met, wasn't it? Yeah. That's where we fell in love. That's where she fell in love with me anyway. Oh! oh ho, ho. You lie. I fell in love with her actually. Daniel Adamski. Um, Okay, so I like this, it is in the center. Actually, it's not really in the center. We're kind of off to the left, it's kind of down. And I don't think that this, the, the, the girl has the best expression. She's not really happy and smiling. She needs to get her chin up a little bit. So um, I, don't, I don't know that we've captured that, actually. Oh, pick straight away. Look at this. Now, we've actually focused slightly on the blades of grass in front, but I'm going to let that go just because the, the feeling of this image is smack bang center focus. It makes me smile, it, makes, it just brings a wonderful expression. I love this photograph. It is wonderful. If only we'd have got that focus pin sharp, it would have been so much better. Um, but great work, Tomek Bokowski. Bokowski. Um, oh, what's the vote like on Instagram? Let's do that. Um, it is at... We're going to talk about the vote on Instagram right now. Empty is at 67% and reflection is at 33. Empty is at 67% and reflection is at what? 33. 33%. So if you want reflection to win, then you need to head on over to Instagram and get voting. Let's keep this going. Oh, did I... Did I, I didn't comment on this one yet, did I? Um, I like this photograph. This focus is right here in the center. Um, although it's a little dark as an image, I wanna bring the whole thing back a little bit and even lift, there you go. Before and the after, 
Got a little bit more information here. I do like it. Um, we're at 4.15 millimeters. Um, but this was taken on an iPhone. And this really goes to show what you can do with cell phone photography right now. Um, great center focus image. I like the, the way that you've got all these different elements around all pointing towards the middle. So nice work, Marin Plessy. Pleasy. Chris Renfro. <laughs> Chris Renfro. Um, I like this. The focus is kind of in the center, but we're a little skew if. A little woohoo, a little drunk on that one. Um, yeah, it's not quite in the center. That would make it in the center. But we're not in, the problem is we're not in the center of the bridge, actually. We're just off center. And that's what makes this whole thing feel a little bit weird. Because when you're smack in the middle, you better be smack in the middle. Otherwise, it's a little off. We can lift this up a little bit. And also, I think that your greens, I don't know if you've boosted your saturation a bit too much. There we go. It's a little bit, little bit better there. I think that feels a little bit better. Um, your Instagram is aerospaceship. So my guess is you're watching Elon, Mu Elon Musk's launch. Aerospaceship. Um, okay, from Jer Jeremy Connor, this is a tiny little monkey. Look at that. That is adorable. Few issues with this image though that I can see. First of all, clearly what's happened is your, your exposures, you, we can't see the monkeys. So you need to bring the exposure up. I'm gonna talk about the biggest issue that you've made here with this, which is you've tried to add more focus to the monkey by using clarity and you've negative clarity. So what that does, I'm gonna give you an example. If I take the brush here and I go negative, so double click the effects, negative clarity, what you can see happen is it makes this, in fact, I'll do it on the monkey so that you can see if we can actually bring the flow all the way up. If I go like this, you can see what's happening. What it is, you see, it makes this weird effect. Plus clarity, right, adds sharpness, what people think. But when you get rid of it, it flattens all of your midtones. And what you've got here is there is zero contrast on your highlights or the shadows, and there's also zero contrast on any of your lines. You try to fake blur it out, and you've really affected your image in a negative way. I say this every week, go watch my video on the Clarity tool. Do not overuse it. If you wanna get rid of, if you wanna add some focus to something like this, go ahead, use the brush tool, okay? And instead of using Clarity, use Sharpness. Take your sharpness down, and then when you blur that, that will actually blur that out correctly as opposed to ruining your midtones. Um, so I like, the, I like the idea of the image, I just think that the editing needs a lot of work. Wow. That is a, I've never tried to photograph the moon and I'll tell you why, because it scares me, because I think I'm gonna fail. And looking at a photo like this, I think I would fail. Because I don't know that I, I mean, oh, you got a 600 millimeter lens on that. I don't have a lens that, that, that's that long. But look at the craters in here, the details under here. This is a fantastic photograph of a moon. Um, are you also watching Elon Musk's flight? And maybe the car will land on the moon and you can photograph it. Yeah. <laughs> look at this. Nathan, this is a ground squirrel. Is this from Groundhog Day? Squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> um, Groundhog Day, that's soon, isn't it, in Canada? Is that in Canada? Does anybody know? Huh? You, have you have it here? It's American, it's not Canadian. It's a great movie, though. Mm -hmm. Groundhog Day, right? Is that a movie? Yeah. It is. Mm. It is, it is, and I like it. I've said that, now I can't remember. Um, I like it, it's a ground squirrel. Um, what's the difference between a ground squirrel and a squirrel? Is it, is it, does it become a ground squirrel when it's just on the ground? When this climbs a tree, does it then just become a squirrel? If it lives in the tree, it's a squirrel. If it lives in the ground, it's a ground squirrel. Didn't know the difference. Neither did I. And also, why isn't a tree squirrel called a tree squirrel? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna say, um, I like this photograph. Um, I think that the edit's just a little bit boring. I don't. I, that, that's my issue. And ed editing shouldn't be crazy. It shouldn't change everything. 
But something like, I just used morning coffee on this one just because I thought it would look great. And I think that what we have done is we have brought up, look at this, we've added some, some sharpness, some contrast. I'm getting my 20 minute call, I think, from Rosie right no. now. No, I'm not. Um, let me see, video. Oh, we've got the light rays video. Um, we're gonna show that right now. So uh, we had a photograph a minute ago where we had beams of light that were coming through. Um, I made a video on how to make this inside the Photoshop. So um, let's watch a little bit of that video right now. Create a new layer by hitting Command Shift N and I'm just going to draw on it. So this is our sun here. Sorry, let me reset my brush because that's what we're going to create in a minute. And I'm gonna show you how to do all of that. So it's just reset. Like so, okay, so here we go. This is our sun right here, and essentially we want light rays to come out from it like so. Quite simple to do with some easy things inside Photoshop. And this is how we... Okay, great, so that's a video you just have to search for. Is it called Light Beams? Mm -hmm. Light Beams, just search for that. Um, photos in color, Light Beams, and there's, you'll see a load of... Um, You'll see that video. Rosie's just also said that I should share this with you. She saw it this morning. It was posted originally on Love What Matters, and it was how to create a gorgeous photo shoot inside Hobby Lobby. <laughs> so Hobby Lobby in the UK, what do we have? We have Hobby Lobby. Yeah. We have it here and in the UK, so it's ignore that. Um, basically, it's, it's like a craft shop where people have gone, you know, they sell all the plastic flowers, and they've got these models that are standing behind these these um, flower arrangements and having photographs. And actually, um, people have done like a ridiculously good job of this. Um, I'm gonna make a video, I'm gonna make a video. We're gonna go to Hobby Lobby and we're gonna do a photo shoot inside Hobby Lobby and see if we get kicked out, right? We'll, we'll take, We'll just take some normal lights, then we'll go back with like a full lighting kit and just set, <laughs> just set it up. It's That's brilliant. Hobbycraft. It's called Hobby Craft in the UK. Um, who said that? Helen. Helen Jenkins? Yes. Hey, Helen Jenkins. Let's come in here. Let's keep on going through this. Um, why? We keep getting some photographs that are coming in the wrong order, and I don't know why. But let's have a look at this one. Um, wow. Um, this isn't really sent in the center, unfortunately, but so it, it doesn't fit with the theme of the week. However, I'll spend 30 seconds on it just to say, wow, what an incredible lion and lion cub. So elegant and perfectly beautiful. It's a tiger, not a lion. We know it's a tiger because it's got stripes. Lions have stripes. Lions don't have stripes. And a male lion has a mane. Welcome to Animals <laughs> with Ed. <laughs> know your animals with Ed. Okay, let's keep going. This is from Smart Pilot. The thing is that you're actually really smart, so that's quite funny. I don't know that I am that smart. I just don't really, I, I can't, I can never remember things. Um, center focus is good. Unfortunately, we focused here on the guy's t-shirt and not on this kid's face. So our focus is completely wrong on that, unfortunately. We did that one, we did this one, we did that one. Um, why, our order is definitely wrong, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, everyone's saying that, they yeah. keep your, that you keep going to them next and then it's jumbled up every time you go back. So you, they've all got mixed up. I just upload from during the break. So yeah, like... so I know we've just uploaded more. Let me just come here to view, sort. Ah, oh, added order. I must have done that incorrectly. There we go, I changed it. Oh God. Right, we're coming all the way back to the, oh. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Not to the beginning, I'll skip to the ones I've done, but these are, this is the order in which they were uploaded to Dropbox. Done that, done that, done that, done that, done that, done that. Okay, here we go. Fernando Arias, wow. So this is a beautiful, Portrait photo, um, pregnancy. Do you call them pregnancy photos? Mm -hmm. um, maternity. Maternity, there you go. Um, we should do paternity photos, which is guys sticking their belly out and doing it. Okay, we're going to do a photo shoot called paternity photos. Um, that's it. Ray says he's down. Um, 
I love the lighting on this. I actually like the color tone on this. Usually when, I, when it's black and white, I want it to be black and white like this. But actually, I think that the, the color, this sepia tone is beautiful. Issue though, over sharpening. So if we come into this, you can see that we've kept the detail of the skin, but through sharpening, what we've done is we've just almost added even more detail to it like this. And this is when we get, you can see, all, almost all the little pores are too accentuated. So beautiful job, but just be careful on your sharpening. Um, this is unfortunately is underexposed, but I do like it that there is this bird right in the middle. Does anybody know what type of bird that is? A robin? No, it's a tree bird. <laughs> like a, it, no, that's not a tree, that's a bush bird. Is that a hummingbird? A hummingbird, they're not that fat. And it's definitely long. Needle, it's got a needle, yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it's just uh, too small in the frame, and um, the background's blown out. Maybe black and white would have helped this image. Hum is it really? Someone said hummingbird. That is a fat a hummingbird. One. Wow. Kev got it. Kev got it. Nailed it. Okay, what do we got here? This is a, a bald eagle, or a golden eagle. It's an eagle. We'll just call it an eagle. Um, it's not really center frame, unfortunately. I mean, it is, but you see it's looking over here. So we've got more space on the back of its head than we have on its beak. So really we needed more space to the left of this image. But we've got the focus smack bang on the eye, which is what we're always looking for. A nice bokeh in the background. We did that one. Center focus, okay, this is fun. Um, but I don't, I, I'm gonna say something a little harsh here. I think it's fun, but I kind of don't care. It's one of those photographs which is like, oh, I get it, we're close, but the thing is, the focus is on in the glasses, but what's around the glasses is absolutely nothing. So therefore, we should have just done a self-portrait in a mirror as opposed to in the glasses. I don't think it does anything for us. And also the glasses have got a blue tint, tint that means that it looks like our white balance is way off on our interest but then we'd ruin the face if we actually got it right. So, few issues with that photo. Wow, this is a perfect example of center focus, sent in by Karim Nabi. Lone boat, it's called. Look at that. The oars are outwards. Let me zoom in here. The oars are shooting outwards, perfectly symmetrical, wonderfully on the lake or ocean. Um, Absolutely wonderful. You have done a sterling, sterling job of this. I'm just going to change this setting because I keep jumping in and out here, which is what I don't like to do. There we go. All right, this and back here. Nice work. Um, absolutely wonderful photograph. I wouldn't change anything about that at all. It reminds me of Gregory Colbert. Does anybody know Gregory Colbert? If you don't know his work, look him up online. He's one of the most stunning photographers of all time. Um, amazing. Okay, I like this center focus, black and white. You've nailed your black and white because you've got your highlights and you've got your shadows. Sun is kind of blown out, but you've kind of got not got much of a choice. And I like that this tree is lone and in the center. It's perfectly on brand for the challenge. Um, great, great work on the center focus there. Nicely on hides. Um, okay, so this is interesting. The, the, the focus is on the center, which is here but we've got around it from being symmetrical by using leading lines by shooting down a building. Um, I think that that was a really interesting way to take this center frame and um, play with it. So I think you've done a really, really good job there. Um, nice work. Let's keep on going. Thank you. 10 minutes to go. Knitting Jane. Look at these. These are tree squirrels. No, they're not. These are squirrels apparently. Um, I like it, they're kind of, it's very cute, smack bang in the center. It's here, which is a bit of a shame. Um, that's a little bit better, it was just too warm before. So, but I, overall, really nice photo, well captured, you must have waited for ages to capture that. 300 millimeters. 
Um, let's keep on looking here. The audio is gone. You might. I turned on that mic right now. Okay, let's turn this to me. Hello. So you should. Is the audio back? Okay, so now we're going to use a slightly different microphone. Unfortunately, we just lost a battery, um, but we should be back. So let's look at this. Bart Buckles. Um, Burkles. It is smack bang in the center, and it's symmetrical. It's interesting. It's looking up inside the top of a building, but I, d I, don't, I don't know, know that, that I absolutely, absolutely love, love it. it. I, I, feel I feel like, like photographs, photographs like, like this, this are more, more archival. archival. Let's, 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 let's take a representation of this building, building as opposed to it being an interesting photo. photo. Uh, um, oh, look at this cute cat from Florian. Um, it's a little dark, so uh, you, what you want to do here is take your shadow, sorry, and lift this up. We've brought the cat. Unfortunately, the cat's not looking at us. It's looking down here, maybe at a mouse. It's back now. We're back, and this is off now? Great. It should be good now. Um, sorry about that, guys. Technical, but we did it. Ray, on it. Thank you. Boo -boo, yeah. Shout out. Um, yeah, if the cat's looking at something, we need to see what it's looking at, or have the cat looking into the frame, into the camera. But nice center framing of that. Um, we already did one from Giuseppe. We've already done that one. Oh, now we're back. Oh, Joe Warner. This. So I love this type of edit. This looks like a painting. Now, I don't know if this was a composite or if it was taken. I think it was taken right then and there, but you have done a simply fantastic job of your editing. I kind of wish the whole thing was that little bit brighter, just a hair, but Nothing is blown out on this. We've just, if you look at the histogram at the top here, look at this, we've got nothing in the blacks and nothing in the whites, so it's just beautifully formed in the middle. Um, you've added a lot of grain, but they, in, under these circumstances, this is an emotional photo. It's just showing pure, it's like drama. It's like looking down into the fields ahead. It's like challenging. Oh, it's just wonderful. That gets a pick from me. Joe Warner, if you are tuning in, thank you for sending this photo. This was taken on the iPhone 7 Plus. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Woo, iPhone, look at that. That is amazing. We're going to do one in a few weeks on cell phone photography, I think. I think that'll be fun. And also, we should look at what apps, what apps do we all use to edit with, because that's important. Let's keep going. Um, John Barnett, uh, it's not in focus, unfortunately, and it's a little bit boring. The background is so bland. It looks like it's a muddy field behind. We need to get more interest into these photographs, unfortunately. And definitely, if it's still life piece, it has got to be in focus. Oh, this is cool. This is interesting. So something that I would have done just here is I would have actually taken this one into Photoshop and I would have taken this side here and then flipped it and put it on the other side because what's pulling my focus is these cars on the side. But it's a moody image and I like the fact that we've taken the lighting from above to actually light the subject. So nice work on center focus there for sure. Jose, Jose Serrano. Helen Jenkins Knight, look at this. This is a nice fun photo. I think we should be able to see the photographer, yep, just in the eyes. I don't know if there's a flash involved in this, but it's a fun portrait just there. Um, I think the editing's just that little bit simple though. I feel like we want to add in, let's try this one. Okay, that's just brought it to life a little bit, but I'm also gonna go for a daylight film and let's have a look to see if we've got anything that will just bring this back. Maybe this one, feeling fresh, just to really bring this one alive. Um, I like the framing, I like how playful it is. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's very cute. But I would have actually gone with a shallower depth of field, if possible, and got this really blurred out on the outside, so it really brought in the focus. Okay, nice center focus. Now, because we've got smack bang in the center, it means that she's a little low in the frame, but it's on theme for the day, and I like that. Um, unfortunately, though, 
our focus, mm, it looks like it's a little in front. Oh, it's probably on her top. Yeah, you're focused here as opposed to on her face. So she's just a little bit out of focus. So let's work on your focus there, Raphael. Um, Raphael Smur. Um, Raymond Van Flyman. Um, okay, I mean, it's interesting because it's got a, a, the light at the top and it is in the center. I just don't know that it's particularly interesting. You know, it's off the middle of a, maybe the middle of a town where you live. I don't know. It's kind of cool, but it's a little too dark. Richard White. Wow, okay, I like this. Look at the drama, but look at this. We've got the waves coming in. We've obviously got a photographer shooting just here. All got another, you're shooting on a, a Tamron lens there. We can tell by the, the gold circle around it. Um, beautiful though. I, I like this photograph. It's wonderfully warm. I think that the, the edit on this is, is done really well. So good work. Rosie, do we have any more questions? No questions, okay. If you have any questions, we're down to the last few minutes of this, and I'm gonna get through lots of photographs right now. Um, center focus, I do like this. Um, it, it, it's almost not a photo though. It's so flat that it could just be a rug. Maybe it is of a rug, or maybe it's the inside of a church or a mosque or a religious building of sorts. Either way, smack bang in the center and you've, you've really got your, your composition perfect on that. Um, same with this one, exactly the same with this one. Look at, the, look at the two colors. That's what I love about this. We've got the dark gray in the middle and the rich brown around it. I love that. It's almost, this, this would look great as a photograph or printed on something actually. It looks 3D, doesn't it? It looks alive. You've really done well at capturing the two different colors on this. I was gonna get a pick, I love it. Um, a Citroen watch. Don't Citroen make cars? Mm. I've never heard of this watch. Um, is it, it, I think that your white balance is off because I'm guessing that the strap was actually supposed to be black. Um, yeah, I, I'm a little confused to this image. Maybe black and white would look a little bit, yeah. So on, on this, our focus is right, but we've got harsh shadows. The watch is disappearing to black. Um, Maybe what you were playing with, I, I brought out a video just over a week ago about how to do product photography. So I think this is a great attempt at that, but I think you can do some more work and really trying to work on it. Oh, we have a question. We'll do two more photos and we'll do a question. Samuel Nurberg, um, what a fun family photo, what a fun holiday photograph if you're on holiday. But I like it, it's kind of filmic in its feel. I would lift it up that little bit. Um, I love the shapes on his face. It's so much fun. Um, it's really quite a, a, a nice photograph. I'd got lower though and have his head above the horizon. One more. Oh, look at this. Steve Pickett. Um, I like it. Tomorrow's Photos is his Instagram. This is a classic um, photograph that we've seen all over the place recently. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, you've really nailed your focus. And I think you've also got a really fun color grade on this, although a little lighter. And actually, you know what I'm gonna try with this one? I'm gonna try this, uh, where is it? Cine stock orange and teal on this one. There you go, because it's that very contemporary feeling to that. Okay, question time with Rosie. Um, how important is screen color collaboration and what do you use to calibrate the screens? Okay, how important is screen, screen color calibration? Very, 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 very important. Um, and I can show you with a few photographs actually, because if your screen is not calibrated correctly, it means that when you print it or when you send it somewhere, or when you put it on Instagram, it's going to look different. Now, every screen can be calibrated slightly differently, but so for example, a photo on an iPhone might look slightly different to a Samsung computer, even if they're both calibrated, you know, because everybody will have different calibration. But if you calibrate, it means you're gonna be closer to what people are gonna be seeing. So if I'm editing on an uncalibrated lens and it's not very good, the, the, the screen, then my yellows might be way off, so they might be completely oversaturated. And when other people see it, it's like, whoa, that's way too bad. So I would do that. The way that we, I calibrate everything here is all of my computers are Apple computers. 
and they're all Apple Macs, they're all in the last few years, so they're all calibrated evenly. That's how we know things are calibrated here. But if not, you can use a spider, it's called. If you look for screen calibration, type in spider, then there's a little thing that you clip onto your screen and, and does all those things. Let's jump back into Yasser Arafat. This here is an example of that calibration. I think that your yellows are way too yellow. They should be more this side and also, You've made the subject darker. I don't know what's happening. You've, do, you've done something with the focus here and it looks very fake. Um, maybe the clarity tool too much or something, but it looks very fake in the middle, which is really letting the photo down. Um, Riches Andrianska. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's in the middle. We're using a leading line, but it's just too dark and not that interesting. Already did that one. Oh, look at this. This is a rotten peach or apple, or something in the snow. I like this, this is a great fun photograph. It's photographed smack bang in the middle. We've got all of the details around it which are highlighting that it's in winter, that it's cold, maybe it's defrosting a little bit. Um, so I, I think that's a really nice well-framed photograph and I like the, the intensity of the orange. Already did that one and that one and that one. Oh, this is center focus. So. I actually actually do like this. It's a very weird, it's from a crane. It's a chains hanging down. However, I don't know, I don't know if you've used too, I think you've used too much clarity or sharpness. I do clarity, or it's been cut out and put on that background. You know what, I think it may have been cut out and put on that background, because if I increase the sharpness, you can see that the, um, see, look on the outside. You've got this, you've got this big white line around the outside. So either it was cut out and, and added to this or you've just added too much sharpness to it. Uh, but outside of that, I think it's quite an interesting photo. Uh, Marion Zaringa, nice photo, well captured, however, the editing hasn't really done you any justice at all. Go onto um, my YouTube channel and search for how to edit, port portrait edit in Lightroom. And there's, uh, there's two or three that I've done, which is there's a beauty retouch and there's a portrait, very similar lighting to this that you can actually pick up a load of techniques to edit photos like this. Chris Cloud, ooh, moody. Great feeling, the focus is right here on the road. I love the mist coming across. I like the dark feeling. My guess is this was made, this, this is made for Instagram. It just looks like I would double click that on Instagram and like it. Um, absolutely wonderful, wonderful work on that. Let's keep going, because I know that we've, we've probably got loads more in here. We do, whoa, we're getting too good at all of these. You're shaking it. Wrap it up. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm, now I'm gonna whip through at the end and have a look at a load of them um, and see what I can find. And next week I'm gonna put something in place where I think we're going to not keep all the images on screen. We're going to select, have a more select few that we actually look through so we can get to all the best photos that I can demonstrate techniques with. Um, I like the reds and the colors of this one. That's kind of cool. I'm gonna whip through this though. I'm not gonna do any more editing, I'm just gonna talk about them. Um, oh, this is cool, I like this one. Uh, the white balance is wrong, it's too far in the blues, but it has had some cold, and I like the focuses on the back of the hat. Um, nice shallow depth of field, smack bang centered focus, but I don't think it's particularly interesting as a photograph, it's just a little bit simple. Uh, oh, I like this beautiful long exposure, which is what, what means we've got this Nice blurred sky, which may have been done in post-production unless these leaves didn't move at all. Because that's impressive if these didn't move at all. Beautiful photo, I don't know where that was taken actually, but it's very cool, from Juan Pablo J. Um, interesting center focus, big <coughs> bright sunshine there. Um, but the, it's just not in focus. Too dark. I like the framing of this, it's kind of interesting, but there's, no, there's nothing going on in the image. Love that photograph. Oh, look at this. 
This is a starfish. Is this in a fish tank and it's stuck onto the front of the tank? It doesn't look like it suckers are. So is it just floating in the ocean? Um, it is behind the glass, but um, I like the photograph. The problem is here, it's a little bit blue. I'd have, I'd have brought the blues down in this a little bit, so it would have made it a little bit more realistic. You can do that, and I'm not gonna edit it, I promised. <laughs> um, oh, look at this. This would have been perfect for next week. This is actually upside down, this photograph, if you hadn't already spotted it. If I turn this photo around, this is the actual way of the photograph, but they've, they've made the puddle the focus of the image, and I think that is a fantastic job. Pick for that. Oh, RB, this is also a pick. Look at that, smack bang in the center. I like it that, that the actual door of this is completely black, and we've focused in on our sky and the drama and we've got a little bit of a blur because we've got a long exposure on this. Let's see how long it is. 1.3 seconds. Beautiful. That's how we've got a beautiful soft lake. Oh, it's not, I mean, it is in the middle of the frame, but it's not really, it's not really in the center. This is a great example of an uncalibrated screen. I am gonna show you this. Look at the yellows on this. They're completely overcooked. You can actually see they've edited this to bring in the yellows even more. So if I bring back my yellows towards the oranges, and then I bring down my saturation of the yellows and my oranges, all of a sudden the image has gone from something really quite crazy to something which is way more natural looking. Um, so I would say that Rick Mentor, you need to calibrate your lens. Your, your lens, your screen. Let's keep on keeping on. Uh, wow, look at that. That is a statue that is coming above the treetops. Uh, I love this statue. The image is a little bit dark and moody. Look at this. That is a bird well in action. Um, and I like that. I like that a lot. I think it's fun. I think it's playful. Um, and I think that the, the focus, you are pin sharp on this. You are pin sharp on the eye of that bird. So congratulations. That one was sent in by... Um, Vasil Katow, beautiful. You can't take a picture of the Eiffel Tower and cut the top off it. I'm so sorry, you just can't do that. This is fun for Mu Youssef. Um, a lot of motion in this, a nice soft portrait of somebody moving through space, beautiful. This here, um, look at that. This is a photographer taking a picture of a photographer. Also sent in by Trapper Dams, you've already had one done today. Adi Schiller. Um, this is great. This is absolutely wonderful. Look at this sole single person. This is on the London Underground. Um, no, it's not on the London Underground. This is in an underground somewhere else in the world, but it's designed just like the London Underground. It's great. Um, I like it a lot. I think that it could have done a little bit more contrast. We already did that one. Um, nice center focus. Um, cute photograph, but the, the kid really should be focusing on the camera or somewhere more important. It's a little bit, I don't know where to look. Um, that's pretty. You know, it looks like it should have been a screensaver on the back of your, uh, on a computer that was brought out in 1995. Is that feeling very 90s. Beautiful, just a little bit oversaturated for me. Center focus, wow. Was this taken from a drone from Casper? Um, Great, it must have taken some time to actually arrange that, especially having some kids in there. Um, that's gonna definitely be a printing photo for the bride and groom there, so nice work. Whatever is this? It's like a wine glass. Oh, it's another upside down photo. This is a wine glass with water that they've dripped ink into. Um, I like it, and I actually like it that you cut it off because it made me try and figure it out. Um, I would have loved to have seen it in color. I would have loved the background to be a strong color and then the ink to be a contrasting or color that works in opposites to that. But nice work, Darren. Yeah, it's a product shot, um, but it's floating. There's no shadow. It's weird. Uh, yeah. Ooh, that's kind of interesting. It's kind of like a deflated bride. Um, it looks like, yeah, Rosie's right. It looks like a drawing. Um, I really like it. Talk about conveying emotion in a photo. I would love why that was taken. 
Uh, I think that you've overdone it slightly on the clarity. You know I'm gonna say clarity every time I say that. Just too much clarity, which has really brought in the edges a little bit too much. Um, well, that's fun. It's not really center focus. It's more left-hand side focused. Dog, cute dog. Um, you got your focus between the eyes. A lot of times people do this. You've either got to focus on the tip of the nose or the actual eyeball. Unfortunately, we've missed the focus on this. Um, I'm just gonna flick through a load of these now. Wow, look at that for an aerial photo. Um, that is impressive. Bulldogs, w where do they play? Batavia, Bat Batavia. Yeah, that, that is a cool um, high school kind of arena thing. That is very cool. Yeah, well, nice photo, I like the symmetrical. I wish it had got higher though, because you're missing the edge of the running track unfortunately. Um, oh, that's playful with a kid playing on this light up table. Um, it's just a little bit too dark. Oh, that had a breast in it. Um, Teresa Tabakova. Um, okay, so we've got the nice American flag up there. It's the Brooklyn Bridge, actually. That's an interesting view of Brooklyn Bridge. Could have been a wider angle lens, though. Hmm. Mm. I'm just going to flick through a load of it. Wow, look at this. I would say that this is center focus because we have this one yellow tree in the middle with the green trees surrounding it. Now, is this also taken on an iPhone? 52 minute, no, it wasn't. Sorry, whoever camera that was. Um, the only thing is it's, it, you can see the quality is not very high on that photo and um, maybe taken on a kit lens. Um, it was taken on a kit lens, I can see that just there. Which is why we haven't got that sharpness. Oh, I like that product photo. It is not center focus though, so we're not doing it. Uh, yep, we're gonna flick through these. Again, this, oh, it's from the same person, Rick. Maybe it's just your editing style, but again, we need to bring back our yellows. There we go, look at the before and the after now. Now, he gets to pick, before, didn't. Um, seagulls, lots of photos of that. Oh, I like this one. This is really playful, look at this. She's obviously, I don't know if she's won something or I don't know, but very playful photo. Keep going, oh, that is a, that is a GoPro doing a time lapse. I think we're, we're there. Oh, look at that stag, Got two stags next to each other. Beautiful photograph, I love the background on this and I actually like the muted color in the color grade, so beautiful work there. I don't know what just happened. My Lightroom just quit. My Lightroom just quit. That means it is the end of the show. I have no idea why Lightroom just quit. But that is the end of the show. This week's theme is, next week's theme, next week's theme is going to be empty. That is what it is, empty. Meaning we wanna see emptiness in your photo. So that should be something like, um, what's wrong? Oh, there should be something an empty, um, where well, there should be something there and there isn't something there or there's just a lot of negative space, blank space doing its thing. Um, anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. We do this every single Tuesday at 11 a.m. Las Vegas time. Remember to upload your photographs. They will be available to upload in the next hour. And um, you can get that download link from photosincolor.com forward slash live. And also, photosincolor.com is just, we've got loads of content going up there. Currently, something every single day. So go check that out as well. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Kev, who has been doing the live stream and uploading your photographs. Thank you to Ray, who has been switching and changing batteries this week. And thank you to Rosie, who has been asking your questions and just being general support on the side. Whoop, whoop. My name was Ed Gregory. This was Photos in Color. No, it wasn't. This was Pick Live uh -huh. on YouTube. And we are out.